This video was scripted before the Nintendo E3 2018 conference, so there's a good chance that this will be slightly outdated if there's any kind of new Pikmin 4 reveal. This is coming from a totally oblivious land of time. But still, through each of the Pikmin games, there has always been a new and inventive hazard for the players to overcome. These can simply be in the form of the ever-growing array of elements to tackle, or expanding a little more to physical hazards and puzzles utilising the abilities of the different Pikmin. And today we're going to be expanding and inventing many new ideas to blockade our way through the next Pikmin game if it ever comes to be. The list is for the most part not in any particular order, things ended up getting quite muddled as we went through, but as a standard we're going to look at each of the already standing hazards and see where they could potentially be expanded or could inspire new elements entirely. Some of them you may have heard before and others may be entirely new, we will see. So element number one is of course fire, and a pretty standard accompanying hazard could be the polar opposite, ice. We've seen ice throughout all of the games simply through the inclusion of a winterous area in every single game thus far, and whilst the most outlandish moment of ice included in the franchise so far is the ice slides in Pikmin 3, there's many ways this hazard alone could be expanded even further. As a standalone hazard, it has a handful of properties that could be problematic for a squad of Pikmin. It is hard, cold, slippery and can be laced anywhere. This can be an element which can physically disconnect pathways, requiring some kind of brute force in order to force your way through. In this regard, it can be used quite simply in the form of walls or just blocks and boulders. But more interestingly, the cold aspect of the ice could have its own applicability with the new Pikmin games. Obviously, if you have a hazard which is too cold, then your goal would be to warm it up to thaw out your path. For this, there could be a few solution options. With your Pikmin squad, perhaps you could require a certain amount of Pikmin to surround the hazard in order to warm it up with body heat alone. I could see this working especially well if the elements hold a singular caged item, and so could be surrounded in all directions. Or again, for a wall, you would simply need all your Pikmin to huddle against it, needing a certain amount of Pikmin to progress further. As we said earlier though, it is also slippery. Though this isn't too helpful as a vertical hazard, having it across a floor plan could bring a new problem to your squad due to its disorganisation and slipping. This could particularly be a problem against a new ice boss, as your movements would be disadvantageous against an icy creature that could handle the room much more effectively. The slippery aspect alone I can't really think of many other issues for, apart from some kind of icy platform drifting down a river, but maybe that'd just be for a particularly hard mission or something. As for the fact that ice can be laced anywhere, let's get a bit more creative. Ice can also take on the form of frost, further pushing the limits of where this element can go. Imagine a spider web fully covered in ice, causing Pikmin to immediately slip off of it rather than stick to it. Perhaps in this case it would be a blessing more than anything. Putting it on water makes it traversable for all Pikmin. Simple slopes would turn into slides, conveyor belts would move you faster, or not at all. Bridges become all the more deadly, walls become more difficult and the hopes of grabbing spicy or bitter berries will be lost for a day. So sure, there's a lot of applicabilities for the ice element as a standalone hazard, but let's expand it just a little bit more and try to combine it with other environmental factors. If we're trying to warm it up and thaw it out, then perhaps we could physically turn up the heat directly onto it. Imagine if we had a pipeline of hot steam or fire or lava in a level. With a simple turn of a pressure wheel, the pipeline contents could be activated, thawing out the immediate ice that's blocking your way. Alternatively, electrifying some heating device could heat up the ice itself. Combine the ice with a stream of water and you've got yourself a solidified new pathway. You could shrink or shrivel any kind of plant life to keep it down if they appear in an aggressive form like a Venus flytrap. Creatures or items could be locked into solid little cages, mobile or otherwise. They could diffuse explosives or be decimated by the explosions they create. Combine ice with wind and you've got a makeshift projectile. Bubbles could become a lot more dangerous being less penetrable and could even crush Pikmin below. If spread quickly, it could immobilise the footing of anything standing in its way, potentially doing damage to the captains or halting a larger creature, at least temporarily. Ice could block magnetism, if that's a thing. It's not fully scientific, but it could fit. Ice could be particularly thin. It could be a hazard that is broken through pure weight, requiring a certain amount of Pikmin to stand on it to progress. Perhaps there's a pit of pure ice somewhere, and only when enough Pikmin are fed into it will all the Pikmin be released. Maybe it'll be the only way forward in the end. Okay, that's a nice long rant about ice, but I've got a good list of other hazards that this could all apply to. Still on the topic of fire, a complementary hazard that could go with this is the earlier mentioned steam. Still very much a hot hazard, but in a more gaseous state. As an extension, these could work the same as previous fire geysers, but could also take on the form of that connected pipeline system idea, with a series of leaky holes, pressure wheels and exhausts to pierce the Pikmin's path. For the most part, I would imagine steam could either be halted in its path or extinguished at the source. 
If it takes on a permanent form, maybe Red Pikmin will be needed to cover up the hole spewing the steam until the rest of the squad move past it. Or those pressure wheels alongside the pipes can be used to turn off or redirect the steam entirely. The hazard could also be used as a kind of propulsion or wind ability. Perhaps having steam can physically push something forward like a geyser. Redirecting the pipelines could push an icy block out of the way or thaw it out entirely through heat. It could also redirect where the geysers are in a certain area. Maybe it can be used to propel lily pads across a still lake or power some kind of motor engine-like device entirely. Maybe throwing rocks at an open exit will shoot them out like cannonballs. Combining other elements, I imagine crystallized rocks would also work as a projectile idea. Electricity could be used to increase or decrease the pressure of the systems themselves. Water could be used to extinguish the steam or replace it entirely with the pipeline idea to create your own waterfalls and location geysers. If concentrated into the ground somehow, it could instantly sprout Pikmin in a given area, if that's ever helpful, or maybe unstick any stuck Pikmin. That's a weird sentence to say, I struggled with it a lot. Poison could also use these pipelines to spread across an area, or explosions could burst any leaks to either increase the prominence or diffuse the steamy output entirely. As a propulsion, they could push bubbles into a helpful position, as a softer geyser approach. Metal could also be applied to fix any leaks, as I imagine this pipeline system to be metallic in form. A magnetic element could also be used to actually move the pipelines, if they are to be physically moved, rather than redirecting its innards. Though Pikmin could also simply pick it up at certain points and change the angle. This has a turn more from steam to pipelines, but still, both could be pretty applicable. This is all speculation after all, there's a lot of ideas and potential with this thought. The next hazard idea I've got is bubbles, taking more inspiration from the water element, though I guess also steam to a degree. Now we've already seen a bubble hazard in the form of the peckish aristocrat, who could blow bubbles to push Pikmin away and would require throwing bubbles to pop them early if they encased anyone. There was also a couple other enemies like that squid thing that I've forgotten the name of that could also spit bubbles. But of course, like everything, this could be expanded further. Let's say for example we have an area with a particularly large body of water. A new type of wall hazard could be that there's a vent of some kind peaking along the floor at certain points. These vents would be pushing out air which would be in the form of a barrage of bubbles when underwater. As a way of pushing through the hazard, either it would work similarly to a pipeline and you'd have to stop the airflow to this vent, or this perhaps suggests that only winged Pikmin could progress. Maybe captains can walk through it, but Pikmin cannot. Or it simply pushes Pikmin up and out of the water only to plonk them back in again. Or it could be a giant geyser from underwater. Pulling away from the obstacle idea, it could simply be a new form of transportation. Where lily pads take you across rivers, bubbles could take you vertically upwards. Maybe out of bodies of water or way up above the land. Connecting it to the environment, maybe the bubbles could also be used as a form of attack of other creatures. Luring one towards a giant bubble generator could lift them up, and maybe you can pop the bubble and drop them down afterwards too. Maybe they can be a helpful tool used by all Pikmin to be able to breathe underwater, or at least in small quantities in special locations. Combining bubbles with most elements would most likely make them pop, but maybe you can power up a bubble generator using electricity, and water could be one of the sources that creates it. Maybe it's even possible to have a poison creature create bubbles, making them toxic and bad for Pikmin to linger in too long, making them a bit more lethal. The peckish aristocrat couldn't kill Pikmin with its bubbles, if I recall correctly, so a lethal one would be a new addition. And a final thing that I can think to contribute to bubbles would be Pikmin weight. Perhaps if used at a hazard, if purple Pikmin were exposed to them in some manner, the lifting effects would be void on them. Could be an interesting new immunity for an otherwise non-immune Pikmin. Next up, looking more into material forms like crystals, maybe, but probably unlikely, there could be a plastic element. We've already seen plastic exists on the planet from the residue of presumably humankind leaving treasure, but maybe somehow it could be integrated as its own thing. Maybe we can visit some kind of junkyard location. If it's in a baggy form, these could be weight-sensitive blockades like the paper bags from Pikmin 2. If it's in a more solid form, then they could perhaps be a material weak to other materials, like a literal sheet made to be broken down by the environment. Unless we get some kind of eating Pikmin or something. Alternatively, maybe we'll get to see that acidic form of poison that we saw in the Pikmin short movies. That would certainly be able to melt through any kind of plastic sheet. Though other methods I could imagine would be burning it, either by directing fire onto it somehow, or even having Pikmin carry a giant torch around for a particular level, igniting flammable pieces on the way, like spiderweb, string, plastic, or anything. Unless there's a lot of pressure on the plastic, though I'd mostly expect the plastic to just take it, even being a platform that can just float on it. Crystals and rocks additionally also likely can't do much, unless another method of breaking through would be charging at it with a certain amount of Pikmin, and needing less with rock Pikmin because they're sturdier, otherwise can't really see crystals doing much, unless there's a sharper version somewhere. Plastic, I imagine, is also explosive proof. 
Though going back to that acid tangent idea for a moment, as a hazard, I can imagine it would mostly consume bodies of water, requiring more water to dilute it out. Or it would only be a puddle which white Pikmin can exclusively walk through. Alternatively, making it heat up with fire could make it evaporate away, or explosions could disperse it and clear the way. Or ice could also solidify it for all to walk on. Other than that, there's not a ton of obstacle applications for this hazard, but I thought I'd mention it. So moving on once again, we now have something similar to plastic, but even less natural, metal. I discussed this in a previous video, and while some have debated that it is unlikely to see in such a natural-based game, or at least in a Pikmin form, as an elemental hazard, this one has a lot of applications. As a wall, it could require electricity to move it upwards if it's attached to some kind of pulley system. Or as a flat platform, it could be influenced by most of the elements there. Fire would overheat it through conduction, as could electricity if it doesn't electrify the whole thing. Ice could make the whole thing slippery or could stick you to the metal. Magnetism could move the whole platform or open the ways if it was a gate. Either lifting it up with magnetism or turning off the magnetism to collapse the gate. If there's some kind of vibration mechanic, this could also also affect the metal in some manner, perhaps making it unwalkable until stopped. And if it's some kind of reflective metal, then maybe it could have a mirror effect on certain elements or effects. Most of the elements would likely be ineffective against this metal though. Following hand in hand with this is magnetism. This could simply be a new effect, though it probably won't need a dedicated Pikmin or ability to work with. Most magnetism would likely come from an electricity powered device of some kind that simply needs to be shut off. It could also be used to create bridges in a new manner, having yellow Pikmin required to make the bridge connect as a series of connected magnetic compartments, but collapsing again once the Pikmin break the circuit. There could also be small areas with a magnetic field which you can impact. Maybe if there were creatures with a magnetic shell of some kind, they could be immobilized while in this zone if you activate some kind of magnetic effect. Elements like water or electricity could also be used to make or break the impact of this element, whilst I imagine bubbles or ice could completely negate the effects because of their mobility nature, so you wouldn't be able to get stuck. Everything else would be unaffected. Beyond simply having mobility, magnetism could also allow for aspects of anti-gravity, though the prominence of this would depend on how much Pikmin 4 wants to be like Mario Kart 8. Still, having platforms turn to be even more sloped than what is usually possible would be an interesting map design to see. So another element I mentioned briefly earlier that kind of expands from the electricity idea is vibrations. This again would most likely work as a small aspect rather than a full-blown element, but the general premise is having certain things vibrate to cause disruptive obstacles. As a floor plan, it could make the platforms very uneven and have Pikmin struggle to stand steadily, if they'd even be able to access it at all. As a way to negate this effect, we could either have an additional stickiness element, whether that be in some kind of spiderweb laced form, or by using that freezing ice idea from earlier, or even bringing back that magnetism idea. Alternatively, the goal with this kind of hazard could be to deconstruct the source, requiring some kind of circuit break, either in the form of electricity or water. Vibrations could also be a new way to destroy any crystallized blockades by having something vibrate so violently against it until it shatters. Vibrations could also make any sources of bubbles non-functional due to their fragile nature, or if put in an underwater location, could cause a spree of waves, making blue Pikmin or even captains unable to swim under the water without the help of wing Pikmin. It's a bit of a weird one, but it's a small and new idea. Going more into this weird vibration tangent, what about sound waves? This again would probably work awfully similarly, but it would most likely be coming from electrical devices. I doubt we'll be seeing screaming Pikmin anytime soon. If glass was a thing, then it could shatter it, but maybe that'll be too close to crystals. Only other thing I can think of that would make it stand out much more from the vibration idea is to have it sound silently, making Pikmin angsty and unable to focus or obey, requiring you to take out the source so you can properly use your Pikmin. Moving on, the next element I got mentioned here is wind. We've rarely actually seen this as a hazard apart from blowhogs, I believe, but this could very well work nicely as a little element to deal with. In the past, wind has always knocked over all Pikmin and captains and left them leafified. And perhaps as an obstacle, it can do a similar thing, though maybe without the flower aspect. Perhaps we simply have a powered fan blocking certain paths to progress, or we have natural wind blowing in a particularly windy environment. The wind could appear in a couple of other forms too. They could be simply geysers packed together like the bubble vent idea from earlier, or could be in projectile ball form to shoot out to disorganize your squad. Elements that could perhaps negate the effect would be heavy Pikmin like purples, iced stickiness, or regular stickiness from a spiderweb, as well as magnetism or simply having an option to have Pikmin hold on together like ants creating a raft or a bridge. Another element that's a small one that could come to pass is the slightly previously mentioned evaporation. I doubt this would be a full-on mechanic that the Pikmin can use as a tool, but it could be a cool environmental effect. 
If we did have weather conditions that had an actual impact on how the level designs panned out, then this would simply be the effect of a drought-like heat of some kind. This would, for the most part, probably just dry up any and all bodies of water. Maybe it even links into that bubble idea somehow. If it's not a weather condition, perhaps it's simply just another method of overcoming an obstacle. Maybe to clear up water, instead of pulling the plug and draining it, you have to activate some kind of hot device, aim at the water, and evaporate it away. There's not too much to say with this mechanical element, but it'd be a cool attention to detail kind of thing. The next one on our list doesn't really correlate to any already existing hazards, but if anything, could connect to that wind idea. I've listed it as wideness, and I briefly mentioned it, and it's more of a Pikmin squad ability rather than an element. Though it might defeat the point in some places, it could be cool to see Pikmin act a bit more like ants in a way of combining their bodies to become a stronger force. Say, for example, you have a constant wind that is pushing Pikmin away from a certain location, but along the side of the path is long stretching vines. As a squad, your Pikmin could hold onto these vines and then onto each other and push or climb forwards as a way of brute forcing the whole squad past the wind, literally holding on as a squad to get through. Another application for this could be a large gap with no bridge. Perhaps in this case, a simple bridge would be more applicable, but it could be cool to see the Pikmin making a makeshift bridge for themselves. Maybe this could work specifically for the winged Pikmin in certain locations, allowing for a kind of monkey bars effect for the rest of the Pikmin or captains. Moving on to the topic of poison, an extension of that which we've briefly seen in the Vahima Fosbat and the Puff Stool is spores. This could full on be the return of the fan favourite mushroom Pikmin hazard that we've seen only once before, but could be interestingly expanded into the future. Say we have a mystical cave with glowing mushrooms and darkish nocturnal creatures, and through either the whole cave or maybe from interacting with things like the little mushrooms, will expose the Pikmin to plumes and spores of poison. Perhaps the immediate reaction for most Pikmin is to begin suffocating like it is poison from Pikmin 2 or 3, but if left unattended, extends to become zombified into a mushroom Pikmin form. This new location could even expand further with all sorts of new mushroom enemies, all with a similar parasitic feel. And with it being an airy hazard, I would imagine this would for the most part deny all access to certain Pikmin, or at least make them difficult to work with. Most other applications could return to the uses of poison in Pikmin 2. Fire could be used to burn the sources of the spores, or ice could freeze their ability to spread, and wind may accidentally spread the disease further or to a more concentrated point. The next thing I've got written on this list is projectiles. Presumably this could simply be a new form of most of the previous hazards. I imagine for the most part there could be a kind of cannon or hose hazard that spouts certain elements to interrupt you. Powered either by the element it spreads or some other mechanical process, it could be aimed to spit fireballs which we somehow haven't seen yet, or crystal balls could become more horizontal, there could be little jolts of electricity to paralyse bits of your squad, poison, ice balls and bubbles, or even just little gusts of wind like we've seen some creatures do. It's not really too inventive as an integration tool, but it could be a nice form of diversity for each of the elemental hazards we've come to see. It could even have the Super Mario Galaxy effect of being used as a mobility solution in some places, or it could be slowed down to create the source of the bubbles transportation. Or to go really crazy, it could be used as a tool to create other things. If it's pumping out wind, maybe you can make Pikmin place some kind of plastic bag over it to make a homemade balloon to get you somewhere specific. I doubt it, but it is an idea. If this kind of thing was placed underwater, maybe it could force your Pikmin onto the surface. Or if it's spouting ice and aimed upwards, it could pop any Pikmin in bubbles in the path, as a way of knocking your Pikmin down and being an extra hurdle. As an additional extension to the fire hazard which we've mentioned in the past, it could be interesting to see lava as an element. Though seemingly similar to water, perhaps it's the kind of surface that only red Pikmin can walk on, whilst all the other Pikmin would sink through, including captains. If it's integrated into the environment, perhaps propelling ice or water on it could crystallise it into obsidian, making it traversable for all. It could also end up being the source of the steam idea we mentioned earlier. Moving on is another mini hazard I've mentioned a few times already in this video, stickiness. I mostly got the idea from the spider enemy in Pikmin 3, which has a spider web Pikmin can get fully trapped onto. If used more commonly as a hazard, could be a well created and admittedly frustrating blockade. Simply having a wall in the form of a spider web is good enough. But defeating the spider to break the spider web has been the first form of this hazard. But without the spider, it could work the same as the plastic idea, needing weight or charging force to get through. 
It could also be forced to bring fire, ice, or water to it to destroy or negate it. Or even something like vibrating it so much it disintegrates could be an interesting idea. If it's not simply in wool form, it could also be placed on the bottom of water to make blue Pikmin unable to swim up through the water, forcing them to move like the captains. On creatures, it could make most Pikmin unable to leave its clutches until a certain amount of time, or could even be used as a tool to immobilize the larger ones. Imagine having a giant creature in a spider den getting stuck from stepping in the spider web flooring everywhere. Ice could also be the polar opposite to this spidery hazard due to its slipperiness. Put it on walls and maybe you've got some crazy anti-gravity ideas coming back. And finally, as the last thing on our list, it's a bit of a weird one, but I'm sure it could happen somewhere. Lasers. I know, I know, it's a weird one, but maybe it could simply be the super concentration of fire or electricity. It could simply be a device we find that shoots it outwards. To take it down, you must break the circuit to the device or have some new reflective Pikmin that can redirect it. If we were able to have reflective surfaces, that could also maybe be a cool way to extend this hazard. Or if we have the Pikmin change the direction of the source so that it can be aimed elsewhere. Maybe it's the only way to burn through a metal plated wall, or it sets off a giant bomb rock on the map. Maybe we already have laser immune Pikmin with the rock Pikmin. Water could also be a quick fire way to douse out the source. Maybe a laser shooter can be found underwater inactive, but once drained or evaporated, it suddenly becomes an accessible tool or hazard. It's definitely one of the more extravagant ideas for the Pikmin franchise, but maybe it could work. Using mirrors to redirect it across some kind of factory setting could start off the whole machinery and open up the world. It could be an interesting mechanic, even if it does appear just one time. So there you are, there's my lengthy descriptive list of some new hazard ideas for Pikmin 4, and I've touched upon the different forms of these hazards quite a bit, but here's a bonus little section of even more hazard forms. The classic one I've seen a lot before is having a secured floating platform which must be detached to make it mobile. Or perhaps a sunk platform could be lifted to float either by opening up a steam geyser underneath it or by removing a heavy object on top of it. Perhaps if balloons were a thing, the weight of the platform it's holding could be adjusted for a vertical puzzle or bridge creation. I could picture a flying platform across an open gap which you must weigh down to be on your level to cross. Like the opposite of a bamboo wall. And what about the bamboo bridge? Same concept, but the opposite. Have a bridge with grabbable handles or string for the winged Pikmin to lift temporarily for the other Pikmin to cross. What if we had a platform that was entirely lifted either by balloons or winged Pikmin that need to be taken across a map with your whole squadron on it? Maybe the map itself has a wind current that can take you anywhere. There could be a pipeline of cold air that can be displaced or redirected onto a body of water to freeze it over. Maybe there's a windy fan blowing along an icy surface. And to progress you would either need Pikmin that can walk perfectly on the ice to not get slid away, or have the ice thawed out for the rest of the Pikmin, or have extra weighted Pikmin take on the wind after thawing, or replace the ground with a sticky material so all the Pikmin can take on the wind. Or turn off the wind source with electricity. It could especially be interesting if all these options were the solution, giving you multiple ways to play for every hazard. Though I find it possibly too good to be true, that one. How about a scenario where a giant crystal ball is chasing you and your squad, perhaps down an icy slide for more drama? As you're falling, you need to throw your rock Pikmin at it to progressively break it down until it can't harm anyone anymore. Picture a map with a giant bomb rock in the center, and for whatever reason you need to explode or defuse it. Redirecting a pipeline or otherwise of fire, electricity, lasers or lava, or more explosions, could be the thing to set it off to create a giant crater to access. Or using water, ice, bubbles, magnetism or stickiness could stop the thing from going off, allowing you to collect and explore more. Maybe it could simply give you more time before the area is destroyed. With a magnetic bridge, maybe you have yellows or some magnetic Pikmin to complete a circuit to start a magnetic field that lifts most magnetic pieces into place for a bridge. Or if you have a squadron of Pikmin on a platform, leading the yellows or magnetic Pikmin to the edge of the platform could direct it to another platform on the edge of the land you're trying to get to, like a way of directing the bridge. Whether it's full on flying or just on the surface of water is up to you, but as a final thing, perhaps with the plume of spores idea, winged Pikmin could have an advantage or disadvantage depending on the nature of the spore. I can imagine the plume covering the majority of the ground, making the winged Pikmin out of the vicinity to get impacted by it, though at the same time, I can see the spores specifically shooting upwards into them. The possibilities for Pikmin 4 could certainly go in any which direction, and though I very much don't expect the majority of this to actually take place in the game, it could at least be an interesting idea to hypothesize on. Having all or many of these different hazards and elements would certainly make Pikmin 4 a complicated game, so I expect, if any, the more simple ideas would come into place, or at least get combined or simplified in other ways, but as I said at the very start of this video, 
This was created just before the Nintendo's E3 conference, so there's very much a chance that this video foreshadows something you already know. Or is so obliviously positive that it doesn't even know that Pikmin 4 is still mysteriously unmentioned. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you think of more hazard forms and ideas, do be sure to let me know. Perhaps I'll make a third video to this idea if there's plenty more to discuss, or I've already split this in two. For now, I think I've done enough discussing. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.